Hello creative friends, I hope you're well. So I'm still into working small uh, because that's all I have in me right now. And this uh, video or these little ATCs, I should say, were born out of necessity. As you can see, I am swatching in my sketchbook some gouaches that I recently purchased. And the first time that I swatched them, I was using a small brush. I was at my home studio and that's all I had. So I thought this time around I would use a flat brush just to get a better picture of what they look like. And because this is acrylic gouache, it's not reworkable. So once you use it or once you um, put a little dollop on your <laughs> paper, um, in this case I'm using palette paper to swatch them, if you don't use it all, you're going to end up wasting it. So I thought instead of wasting it, I'm just going to use whatever's left over from the swatches and create some kind of an, um, something that I can work on later. And this is what happened. So I grabbed a piece of six by nine, uh, B paper, and I just started doing mark makings. I was really not aiming for anything in particular. Um, this is a bit out of my comfort zone, these kinds of mark making, but I'm trying to push myself to do things differently to explore new territories, I guess. And then once my paper was dry, I used this glass dip pen and some ink, uh, it's Liquitex ink, to just add more marks, a little bit of doodling, etc. And by the way, all the supplies as usual will be listed in the description below. For this piece, I used gouache because that's what I was working with and this is what I want to experiment with and learn. But you can easily do that with watercolor, which I suspect most of you are into if you're watching my videos.
I know I might get questions about the dip pen that I'm using. First of all, is it necessary? No, not really. <laughs> um, you can easily take a marker. I just wanted to use it because I've had it for a while and honestly, I've never, I don't think I've ever used it. So, and it's not really difficult to find. I bought, I bought, I think I bought mine from Amazon, so it's readily available. And the Liquitex ink either is not necessary. It's just because I was using a dip pen, I reached for ink. However, I noticed that the Liquitex ink has a tendency to dry a lot faster than the other inks that I have, the inks that I use in my fountain pens. So it's something to consider um, because I noticed that it was sort of caking on the pen. So I had to wash it a couple of times, which was annoying. So then I switched to a Uniball Signo DX pen because it was just easier. But I'm still glad that I experimented with the dip pen. It's, it's a lot of fun. And I know I'm going to use it more often, but with other inks, not the acrylic ink. This uh, part here, I was not crazy about, so I will correct that. There's a lot of adjustments on this piece and they will come later. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that I was using gouache because gouache doesn't move the same way as watercolor does. The colors don't mingle as, uh, <laughs> I was going to say freely, but they're not as fluid, I find. Even when you add water, I'm not sure if it's true with all types of gouache maybe watercolor gouache is different this is acrylic and i've also noticed this particular brand the the gouache is a bit grittier like it has a texture to it it's hard to explain but it almost feels a bit like sandpaper which is not bad i i appreciate that it adds texture i guess to the work but they're definitely not moving the same way. They're not as fluid as watercolor. So maybe that is the reason why my marks were different. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Or maybe it just wasn't the right day for me to do that type of work. But um, I just kept on going. I think also some of the doodles that I added were a bit premature in the sense that Maybe I should have waited until I cut apart the piece to add some more doodles, maybe. Uh, maybe I would have been in a better uh, frame of mind to analyze what's missing and whatnot. Um, however, I do like the continuity from one cut piece to another because I was working on a bigger one, so... Uh, for instance, if I cut in the middle of a flower, that flower will be represented on two pieces. And I like that. But I think I think some of the doodles and the marks should be done prior to cutting. And then the rest could be done afterwards. Which is why I ended up doing some adjustments later on. Now I want to talk about my word for 2021 so funny story last year at the beginning of the year i chose the word balance because that would was missing from my life at the time i was working from home i wasn't going out much and so my aim was to find balance between work and home and when i chose that word i had no plans of I'm getting a studio. <laughs> so fast forward to a few months ago when I rented a studio space and all of a sudden my life became different. Um, I'm not saying that I have found the balance that I'm looking for, but at least there is some form of balance. Um, I am aiming really hard to get all my weekends free so far. I have spend two full weekends at home <laughs> without having to come in on a Saturday or a Sunday. So I'm very grateful for that. So it looks like my word last year worked. And so this year I decided to choose another word. 
And the word that I chose this year is connecting. Not connection. Connection implies that you have done the connecting. And I also like uh, gerund because it, to me, it's more, it's an action. It's, it's more active. It's more dynamic. So connecting, connecting, um, connecting with people, connecting with like-minded uh, friends and artists and you, my viewers and my subscribers and my patrons. I don't know what shape or form this is going to take. I don't know if things will change in that respect, but this is what I want to aim for. Uh, connecting also because right now we're living in a strange time and connecting is a little bit more difficult but there are so many ways to connect um, we've learned that connecting online is, is very important right now <laughs> um, and you can also connect through things and which brings me back to this piece so we're circling back when i cut up the those uh this larger artwork and i displayed all the small parts right next to each other i was trying to find a connecting element um and i noticed that some of the some of the colors were not represented on all of the pieces um i think the main color is this yellow brown i think it's called and so i that's in that respect i had to do a few adjustments i also struggled to cut these pieces apart it was very difficult uh, there was a lot of thinking during that process i ended up with bits and pieces all over the place anyways um you know as i've mentioned is it's quite uh, disconnected um, it's very different from what I'm used to doing so completely out of my comfort zone I should say so to be able to evaluate what I was missing I started out <laughs> see I'm pointing out uh, what I feel is missing um, this is when I realized that that yellow was not on that piece so I'm going to add a little bit of it on, on that ATC. And in case you're wondering about the frames that you're seeing, I cut them up myself. The, uh, the frame cards that I was using, the Strathmore frame cards, are. I heard from some people that they were able to find them at different sources, but they're super expensive. And... I don't necessarily want to have a frame card per se. I just want to have a frame. So I'm going to try and cut them up with my silhouette machine. But uh, these ones I just cut with my paper trimmer. And it was quite easy. Um, so I'm, I'm just using them as a guide for now because I think it helps to have a white border to, to see what's missing. If I... If I had put these five cards right next to each other, I think I would have had a harder time analyzing them and, and figuring out what which doodles um, I needed to add. So uh, then after that, it was just a matter of uh, filling in some shapes. I like the if you're if you look at the top card the top right card i really oh, well it's gone <laughs> um i like that arch that i did with the 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 stripey like the black and the white stripes and so i use that to add um, some stripes as well in the leaves and some on some of those leaves so there's that connecting element from the arches to the leaves and then of course dots are always present in my artwork so i made sure that i have them here and there that sort of thing so i think in the end i was able to connect all these pieces and that makes me happy i don't know if it's necessary i don't know if these 
should all be connecting because logically they could be displayed separately but I always aim for something that I can display all together to begin with and if they get separated then so be it but at least I have that capability or I have that option to have all five of them next to each other and they look like a cohesive group of paintings. Maybe I'm just being very picky. <laughs> <laughs> it's also fun to there's this element of you know the analysis and the figuring out figuring things out and correcting that responds to a need that I have I guess uh, the type A in me gets nourished that way I guess even the the process of this sort of painting is all about contrast. It's not just about contrast of colors and shapes and whatnot, but also contrast in the process. Because on the one hand, you've got that unintentional mark making um, shapes and stuff. And then on the other hand, you are, or I am anyways, looking for clues as to, to clues to bring everything together and, and the... Um, problem solving aspect of it is very different than the process of painting again i hope i'm making sense <laughs> it's late at night <laughs> i need to go home soon but it was a lot of fun regardless of how difficult it was at the beginning i enjoyed the completion of the project and i think they look good it's not colors that i would normally put together but I'm kind of liking that color combination. But um, yeah, I'm just curious. Are you choosing a word? Like, do you do that? Or are you the type that vows to keep resolutions? Because I was never able to do that. I was always very bad with resolutions. Just the word itself, resolution, it's, it's a bit scary for me. I think choosing a word is more like an intention I guess and I like the word intention <laughs> so yeah not as scary um, and I kind of choose it and then I I write it down in my agenda or you know I remind myself of it here and there but it's not something that I always have in my face it's not like oh my gosh you know I didn't keep my resolution I didn't keep my word uh, it's nothing like that it just so happens that all the words that I've ever chosen are ended up being relevant at the end of the year. So I'm just keeping up with with this tradition, I guess, <laughs> that I have. Anyways, before I leave you, I just want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, whatever holiday you're celebrating, I hope that it's a good one. I hope that you will be able to connect with your loved ones either physically or digitally <laughs> i know it's it's a bit difficult we here in montreal are going into a almost a full lockdown during christmas so it's going to be different but we'll manage and uh, i know i'm going to be talking to my kids uh, via the internet and uh, i will see their little happy faces and so that will make me happy so anyways happy holidays to all of you thank you for watching please stay safe healthy and creative and i will see you soon